This is the new uh, transformer for the oven time base upgrade that I removed from an HP 5342A frequency counter. Uh, these transformers in those frequency counters were used to power the same oven that we're going to place in this, um, this HP 5340A counter. So I'm fairly confident that this transformer will do the job that we needed to do. It has a uh, dual primary and a dual secondary um, for the windings. And for this transformer, one of the primary windings is center tapped, and that's what this lead is. Now, that center tap connection isn't going to be used in our upgrade, but I didn't want to just uh, cut it off or just leave it uh, just floating. So I went ahead and wired a lead uh, onto that, uh, that wire to extend the, uh, the length. The uh, secondary windings for the transformer are here. So I've gone ahead and wired them in series. And then that's what these uh, blue and orange leads are here. And they will go to orange and blue. Uh, orange and blue here will go to pins three and four of our edge connector. I actually show the windings in parallel here for this transformer, but for the transformer we need, we need to wire them in series because these are these are different transformers. As far as the construction goes, uh, it took a little bit of uh, sort of playing around with the uh, with it to get the the shape and everything laid out. There's not uh, there's not a whole lot of room. And this fits this fits pretty uh, pretty snugly in the available space. A thick piece of aluminum uh, plate. I think this maybe is a point uh, as a forty or maybe uh, or a 0 0.04 or a 0 0.063 inch gauge aluminum. And I've, I got it cut and mounted with some standoffs here for attaching to the, uh, to the uh, chassis of the 5340. And got uh, rubber grommets to feed through for the uh, transformer leads. On the top, I've laid a piece of fish paper down just to provide some extra uh, insulation between the uh, transformer connections and the base. There's still a pretty good amount of gap, probably maybe a quarter to three-eighths of an inch of space between the terminals of the transformer and the, the mounting base here. Should be plenty, plenty sufficient of a gap. With uh, this this metal and the standoffs here, it's a very it's a very very rigid uh, mounting system. There's not any flex. Go ahead and mount it into the uh, frequency counter, and then we'll take a look and look at uh, some of the way um, some of the wiring options we have to get this wired into the unit. Uh, I've got the transformer mounted. As you can see, it's a it's a uh, it's a fairly fairly uh, tight uh, tight quarters there with the with that transformer mount. Um, but uh, anyway, that's that's how it's gonna have to go in there. I've uh, still got uh, uh, you know room to clear this uh, this five volt uh, BNC connection here, and of course our regular board will go here. There's the underside. Our low voltage uh, secondary leads here. We'll uh, feed those around, and they will attach to these terminals three and four right here. And our high voltage uh, our primary leads. We'll just uh, route those with these uh, other AC lines along the edge of the chassis and up through this uh, this this uh, little protected feed-through area right here. And then wire them to the line switch, which is down here. The oscillator transformer is wired in. Uh, we've got the uh, low-voltage secondary leads here, uh, just connected to pins three and four of the of the card edge connector there for the power supply and the uh, primary side uh, wire here I'll just run it along uh, this uh, the, uh, the primary side of the main transformer up along the chassis here and we've got it going into uh, through this uh, this uh, cable opening here to the to the top side and I've just terminated this uh, uh, center tab lead here with some heat shrink and just secured it to the to the chassis there so it's not just uh, loose. All right, and uh, up on the top uh, top portion here, this is the uh, the line voltage selection switch, which is where the transformer is wired into, and we've got the uh, transformer leads 
coming up through um, the cable opening here and wired into the line switch here. Uh, these four lead, these two leads, and then there's a lead there and a lead there. That way, um, you know, if you want to switch to 230 line volts, it will uh, switch the transformer appropriately. Uh, in order to get in here, of course, we had to take the uh, side panel off of the unit. It's pretty easy, just four screws. And then there's a uh, machined cover uh, that goes, that sits uh, over here in like this to sort of uh, shield the line switch. So that comes off, it's just, it's just uh, screwed in to the uh, side panel right there. Got the uh, unit plugged in now, of course it's turned off. And with the power off, we have uh, 24 volts AC on the transformer. Just looking at uh, the voltage across uh, pins three and four. All right, and just looking here at uh, pins three and four, and we have our 24 volts with the unit plugged in, not turned on, just in standby. Now that we've got the transformer installed and the frequency counter, the next portion uh, will be to uh, build the power supply for the oven time base. This is the schematic for the A33 board, which is the optional oscillator power supply. And we're going to replicate this circuit. We've got some minor changes. Uh, one, one change that uh, this uh, IC, which is a uh, LM723, um, we're gonna use a, uh, a, a modern version. Uh, it's in the uh, a, a DIP14 package. Uh, the schematic here, uh, when they built this board, they used a the metal can version. It was a 10-pin metal can. Our uh, modern IC uses a 14-pin plastic uh, dual inline package. There's some uh, changes to the pinouts, and I've uh, gone ahead and written them here on the schematic, just so that uh, to help us uh, wire up the board on the breadboard. Other changes, I've used some uh, standard uh, component values for some of these resistors and capacitors. Uh, we used a uh, 510 ohm resistor for R5, used a uh, 1.5k ohm resistor for R7 and R2, and we used a 3.3 kilo ohm resistor for R9. For R6, we're going to use two 24 ohm 1 watt resistors in parallel, that's for our current sensing. And for our capacitors, I've replaced these 580 microfarad capacitors with three 1000 microfarad capacitors for our filter bank. And for C4, used a 22 microfarad capacitor. For C7, use a 10 microfarad capacitor. And for transistor Q1, which controls the uh, oven warming indicator on the front panel, uh, the manual specifies a 2N3904 transistor and I've used a 2N2222 uh, transistor uh, because that's what I had uh, readily available. So look at the circuit now on the breadboard. As you can see here's our uh, layout. It's pretty simple. Our three uh, filter capacitors here. Uh, plastic uh, DIP14 LM723 IC is here. We've got some resistors and uh, ceramic capacitors. This is the transistor for the uh, oven warming indicator. And here are our two 24 ohm resistors in parallel for the current sensing. And then our one uh, kilo ohm multi-turn pot sets our regulated output voltage to approximately 11 volts. With the uh, resistor values chosen that I've chosen here, uh, our full range of adjustment for our regulated output is 9.5 volts to 12.4 volts. I've got it wired into the frequency counter, uh, just using some jumpers. Wired onto the uh, card edge connector, which uh, the regulator PCB will plug into. Uh, be careful when you're doing this. Uh, make sure that you pay real close attention to your jumpers if you're going to uh, set this up in this kind of arrangement for testing. There's it's pretty close, uh, pretty close uh, tolerances in here, and you can. You don't want to shorten any of these pins when you're hooking up your jumpers. Since we're using a model 10811A, this is the A model. Uh, specifies for the power supply requirements. Our oscillator amplifier 
regulated voltage needs to have a noise of less than 100 microvolts and our oven controller needs to be at uh, uh, approximately 30 millivolts and that is specified in the uh, paragraph down here where it talks about uh, kept below 100 microvolts RMS and the 20 volt oven line needs to be kept uh, below 30 millivolts RMS. So 30 millivolts and 100 microvolts or uh, that would be uh, 0.1 millivolts RMS. So we'll look at that once we uh, plug the oscillator in and power it up. First thing we're going to do is just power the unit up without the oscillator and we'll check our voltages on the voltmeter. Now we've got the uh, the frequency counter powered now with the oscillator removed. Uh, we're looking at our regulated output voltage here, 11.26 uh, volts DC, and our unloaded, unregulated at uh, 31 volts. Right, we've got the unit powered on now. We've got our uh, oven time base installed, and our loaded voltage is here for uh, our regulated is 11.2. That didn't change too much, and our unregulated now dropped to 21.6 volts. So our, our oven is uh, cold, which is why our DC voltage has dropped so low. We're down to 21 volts. Once the oven warms up, this will this will come up. Uh, should come up to around 27, maybe 28 volts DC. All right, so I've had a look at the data sheet for the oscillator, and we know that we need a, um, a pretty low noise on the, on the power supply for the oscillator and the oven. Or, uh, from the data sheet, we need less than 100 microvolts, uh, uh, eight, um, 100 micro, less than 100 microvolts RMS on the oscillator supply, and less than 30 millivolts RMS on the oven supply. Now we're using a different transformer, and I've originally built the circuit with the with this uh, layout, uh, just just like the data sheet says, using uh, uh, approximately 1,200 microfarad of total filter capacitance here. Or the ripple that I measured was nowhere near the requirements. So I suspect that uh, I'm kind of curious about uh, how they met the ripple requirements uh, for the oscillator in the uh, HP in the 5342A counter, uh, which is where I got this transformer from. But uh, the transformer used in the 5340 uh, frequency counter, which is what we're putting this unit into, is a different transformer and it may be that the, the transformer for that counter is more uh, robust and the transformer that we're using just uh, doesn't uh, doesn't quite have the, um, the umph to uh, to get uh, that noise uh, the noise at that level with uh, these uh, filter capacitors that they used so uh, since we're using the different transformer uh, I've decided that uh, I'm going to do a little bit of redesign on this on this circuit to get the noise level down to the um, from the on the oven supply without having to use a huge amount uh, of of uh, bulk filter capacitance. Uh, I did some uh, measurements just using uh, larger and larger values of bulk filter capacitance, and what I needed, what the value I needed to get the noise spec down on the oven supply was somewhere around 10,000 microfarads to get that noise level down, and that's just uh, an incredible amount of uh, filter capacitance for this for this circuit. So what I've done is I've gone, I've changed this. I'm using now a single uh, 3,300 microfarad capacitor, and we're using a voltage regulator. And this is a three-terminal voltage regulator, and this isn't a typical uh, LM317 regulator. This is a low dropout regulator. What I'm using is an LT1085 voltage regulator. And we're using a low dropout regulator because of the sag on the DC on the DC input to the oven. So we've got a swing here uh, of 20 to 30 volts DC uh, specified on the data sheet for the oven. I'll be remember from the data sheet here. As our requirement for the for the oven controller was 20 to 30 volts DC. Now when the oven now when the oven first uh, is powered on and the oven is cold, the uh, 
the oven circuit, the heater uh, circuit, actually draws around 450 milliamps, and that will drop the output of our transformer down significantly. And it'll drop it down to near around uh, 21 volts. So we don't have a lot of uh, a lot of headroom to play there if we're going to use a regulator circuit. Uh, a typical uh, the typical volts drop across uh, an LM317. I believe, uh, just look, remembering from what I read on the data sheet, specifies somewhere around 3 volts of a drop across that regulator. So if our oven, when it's cold, drops our uh, output down to around 21 volts, with a 3 volt drop across our regulator would bring that voltage down to approximately 18 volts, which is not within the uh, requirements for our oven circuit. So that is why uh, we're going to use a low dropout regulator. So the low dropper regulator I'm using is uh, again as a LT1085, and the data sheet uh, specifies that uh, it can uh, a, a maximum of 1.5 volt drop across the regulator, and that's at full load, three amps, and that 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 drop will uh, be reduced as the uh, current requirements are reduced. So this is a three amp regulator, and our current requirement at with the oven cold is 450 milliamps. Uh, so based on what I've seen on the data sheet, that will put us uh, within around one volt of one volt drop across the regulator at full load. So with one volt drop, uh, if we're getting 21 volts in, a one volt drop out would get us a regulated voltage of somewhere around 20 volts, and with the resistor dividers I have set up here using just the standard circuit uh, we've got a 120 ohm resistor here and a 2k fixed resistor here to give us a output voltage of 22 volts with the oven cold uh, that's I, I expect that to drop to somewhere around 20 and a half uh, maybe 20.7 volts and then as the oven heats up the current draw uh, will taper off and that'll give us a uh, regulated output of 22 volts. Looking at the current uh, draw through the heater, and we're looking at uh, the, AC, the ACR mess on the heaters on the heater supply. We'll power the unit on, and what we expect to see on our uh, heater supply, uh, which is going to be up here, is we'll see that our DC voltage is going to be somewhere uh, less than 21 volts, but it should be. Above twenty above twenty volts, which is the uh, minimum specified voltage, and our current draw, I expect to see about uh, four hundred fifty milliamps, and we'll see what our ACRMS reading is on the oven supply. All right, we got the unit powered on. Uh, as as I said before, so now we've got our oven reading, our oven current draw of four hundred fifty milliamps. Our AC RMS is our AC RMS is 243 millivolts, and our regulated output is 20.7 volts DC, and uh, fairly stable there. So what we'll look for now is we'll wait for the oven to warm up, and the way we'll know it's uh, warmed up is we'll see that uh, that ambient that current drop off, and that will that will drop off from 450 milliamps. Uh, it'll start to taper down into the 200 milliamp range and then it should go on down to a final stable value at that point we'll see what our noise reading is on the oven supply now that the oven is warmed up we have a oven uh, current reading now of 100 and about 127 milliamps and still looking at our ac rms value we can see now that uh, it's dropped off quite significantly down to uh, 700 or so microvolts. So let's get a reading on the uh, oscillator uh, supply noise now. So I've got, uh, we're looking at channel two now, and we see that we have an AC RMS reading of approximately 400, we'll call it 450 microvolts. And that reading is with the probe uh, shorted. So we've got our ground lead and our, and our probe lead shorted across through this bus, which is, but not connected in circuit right now, just a short to see what we get. So I'm going to call this the, uh, I guess what you would say, this is the noise floor of uh, our, our measurement right here. So if we have a, we'll call a baseline of 450 microvolts, and we'll look for any anything above 450 microvolts in our 
uh, oscillator supply. All right, now we've moved the uh, channel two probe over to the output of the oscillator supply. And as we can see here, uh, still measuring our ACR mess. We've had no uh, significant change. In fact, actually it looks like it's, it's uh, maybe gone down just a little bit from the reading that we had with the, with the probe shorted. And this is with the oscillator, with the power supply now in standby. And we can see here that we've got an output voltage of 11 point, uh, about 11.28 volts DC. All right, the uh, frequency counter is powered on. Uh, as, we, as we see here, the uh, oven cold indicator is, is not lit as the, that would be expected because we allowed the oven to warm up with the unit uh, powered down. Let's take a look at our uh, readings now with the unit powered up. Uh, they, may they may have changed a little bit. It doesn't look like our, uh, our oscillator supply, which is what we're uh, measuring right now, has not, uh, has not had any changes significantly. Still reading that uh, that low uh, microvolt uh, AC RMS, and if we can double check up here, putting this uh, reading in AC, and we can see that uh, yeah, there's no there's no AC reading at all on our multimeter. We'll switch this over now, and we will look at the oven supply. Here on voltmeter, switch to AC, and we see that uh, we get an AC reading here. Uh, looks like it's around, uh, we'll call it 570. Uh, so that's 570 microvolts AC. And we'll see, we may need to rate, change the range. There we go, so we'll change the range a little bit, and we get a closer reading there uh, about 589 microvolts AC and now we can see that now our oven has continued to warm up and now we're only drawing uh, about 100 and 111 milliamps All right, we're looking at our data sheet for our uh, reference oscillator power supply requirements here as, as mentioned uh, many times before we've got less than 100 microvolts ripple on the oscillator supply and less than 30 millivolts ripple uh, on the oven supply now we'll take a look at the uh, harmonic output, and we're looking for a harmonic distortion of uh, any uh, of down more than 25 dB from the output. That'll be our 10 megahertz uh, fundamental. Right now we're uh, connected to the output of the uh, reference oscillator. We need to take a reading here at uh, the connection pin for the for the reference oscillator. If we use the back uh, connector for the reference output. This uh, this signal is uh, goes through uh, some logic uh, circuits in the counter to sort of square the output up and this if we take a reading here this will give us a false uh, indication of the spectrum for the oven output so we've got it hooked up here to uh, right to the connector and we'll take a look at it now on the spectrum analyzer so uh, here's our fundamental here we're sitting at uh, 10 megahertz with an output signal of uh, plus uh, 6.3 dBm we've got our uh, our second harmonic here which is uh, at 20 megahertz, and that uh, that uh, is down to minus 35 dB. So uh, minus 35 to a positive uh, 6.3 dB, so we're looking at approximately 41 dB down from the fundamental. Our third harmonic at uh, 30 megahertz is at uh, minus 27 dB, so for plus six, to minus 27 that's approximately 30 uh, 33 db down from our fundamental so which is uh within spec from the data sheet we said uh more than uh, 25 db down from the fundamental all right um real quick we'll look at the uh, phase noise uh for the oscillator and i, th I think i've got this set up right the uh, manual uh, uses an older um uh, spectrum analyzer an older uh, hp spectrum analyzer model so the way I've got this set up is we're looking at a 10 megahertz center frequency. We've got a span of 50 kilohertz and a resolution bandwidth of one kilohertz. And those are, those are the uh, measurements specified in the manual setup. And what you look for, what we're looking for is any repeating signals greater than uh, 
minus 65 dB above the fundamental. So here's our fundamental, and our minus 65 is going to be somewhere right in here. And uh, what we see is that uh, we have no, we have we have some random, uh, random uh, signals uh, popping up here every now and then, but we have nothing that's uh, repeating. Uh, nothing that uh, is 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 in a, in a repeating uh, pattern, and we have uh, we have no signals generated here. And we can also see I've got the uh, spectrograph turned on, and we can see that uh, we've got uh, no uh, nothing nothing that's uh, repeating in here on either side of our fundamental. So that's going to be it for this video. Uh, the next thing we'll be doing is uh, coming up with a circuit and a uh, board layout that we can use to add all the circuitry to a board to plug in uh, to the counter. It's, uh, it's going to be a, a fairly small board and we've got a lot of things to pack onto that board especially with the uh, addition of our regulated uh, oven output. When I get uh, a layout and a board put together then uh, we'll do a, a follow-up video to that. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching.